to IMT to Android 18 Object Oriented Programming. This is the third session of Chapter 12 for the tutorial part. Uh, we are still discussing GUI applications and uh, in the previous two sessions we addressed uh, very important issues of customizing uh, the window or the widget, also the label. Uh, we explained about the foreground, background, uh, the font, the modification of font. Let's just address one more widget which is very important and we use it a lot in GUI applications. That is the button and in this case uh, what we need to do, we need to address just a simple uh, button and then we can customize any application similar to the way that we are addressing now. What I will do, I will create a GUI where we have a button and this button, if you click on it, it will display a message. Okay, we will customize these messages the way we like. So initially I'll do like this. I'll import all TK enter. Okay. From TK enter import all. And one more thing, since I'm going to display a message, I'll import also from TK enter one special uh, class message box that's used usually in the application of GUI when you want to uh, display um, import all when you want to display separate messages not just a label on the GUI that you are addressing no a separate a message other than your own GUI okay so I'll use object oriented this time I said let's uh, do both of them and see how things go this is GUI 3. Why? Because uh, we created two GUI applications before. I just create a new class so that I can call them or you can call them the time you want. You can use them the time you want. You can instantiate them or create, uh, import their module the time you want. So first of all, we need the in initializer. Okay, and in the initializer here, we receive self. And here, what we need to do, two things. Well, we have uh, the main window and we have uh, the button that we want, want to create so what I will do self dot window this is uh, I keep it private and I'll just create my window this is the first thing you can customize the window that I mean based on the size you like okay Let, let's do that uh, window dot let's specify the title first uh, what kind of title we will say well um gooey three and then the size window dot geometry what's the size uh, okay 250 times 250 is also enough for the time being pixels of course now we need to create a button so for this one, let me go a new line because these are three as actually uh, relevant to each other window. I'll create one new for button. I call it BT equals. I use this uh, method button. And now uh, it accepts different types of arguments. We will go from the extreme basic and then we will modify and customize and see self dot window where to place it similar to label you have to say where you're placing it and placing it on my window here okay so what kind of um, display you want to have on the button so usually we don't have plain buttons with no display we have some uh, display that tells you what this button is meant for maybe we can use click me okay if you like, no need exclamation, it's, it's, it's not necessary. All right, so these are two um, arguments, but usually we have more than two. So let me extend. Let me extend every argument on one line. Sorry, oh, what's going on? Okay, extend again. So we have the place where we are placing or where we are placing our uh, widget, the button, the text that appears on the widget, the action. Now we need the action. So in order for us to create an action to be taken while the button is clicked, 
we need to use what we call command. For command, we allow us to register some action and create it and respond to it. Let's say clicked. I call it, or some people call it sometimes response. Some people call it um, do something. Okay, it's up to you. I would go for clicked. Okay, because it's when clicked. Once it's clicked, there is an action to be taken. All right, that's it. I will customize later on more. These are three main uh, components that I need right now just to create the program. So I created my button. So logically I have to pack it or I have to place it on my window. I will use pack now for other sessions. I mean, I will explain about grid and place. Not now, let's just understand the basics. Okay. So uh, I'll pack, I forgot, dot pack. Okay, then next to that, I will force the main window or the window to enter the main loop. Uh, it's also private window dot main loop. And that's pretty much of it for our class. One more thing we need to do a function or a method in this case, because it belongs to the class about clicked. If the button is clicked, what happens? So in order for me to decide, I will create a function called clicked. I have already decided its name. So it's a function, it's a method in this case, okay. I have to pass self, I forgot, sorry. I have to pass self. Once self is passed, we can access to the attributes in there. So what I'm going to do, I need to pro provide a response. Just a simple response. So I'm, I'm using, I'm sorry, show info from the message box to display a message. So it's, this one is a method from this class. Okay. So what I would say here, we have two things, two main things we have response, the title of the message. And what do you want to say in the message? Well, maybe button check, button check. Just uh, for checking the button here. That's pretty much of it for the class. I'm done with it. I'll get out of the class. I'll instantiate it. So I will create a main method. It's not necessarily that we do it all the time, but I, as I said, I, I got used to this style for modularity and object oriented. So I stick to it. I will instantiate this GUI, so GUI 3, and I pass nothing here because we don't have any argument other than self. Self is the default, is actually the address of this instance. And then get out of the main and call it. So I need to call the main here. So that's it. Let's just run, save and run, and see the output. Okay, so initially look at my button is centralized with the text available in it black and by default this text is small in size these are the sizes that we customize 250 to 150 so if i click on it button check response all right let's customize this button customizing means what I need to change its font, I will need to change its color, I need to change the foreground color, the background color, I need to change a lot of things. Let's start one by one. We have our extension here. Let's start by the foreground. Foreground color. Uh, how about blue? We earlier used blue. Blue is okay. It's nice with foreground. All right. Uh, we need another. Uh, how about the background? The background of the button blue let's try to match it with red background equals red okay and let me to uh, extend here concatenate i have still some more to go i need to change the font so i'll use the font uh, it's also i need to supply here what we did earlier we explained about it so what kind of font do you want to use let's use Arial and let's make it bold okay and then by the way if you keep this 
B capital or small doesn't matter. Okay, it will do it on its own. How about 12 as a side? Oh, it's also a string. I, I don't want to make this mistake. 12 is side. And I need to create extension here. Okay. Keep the command the way it is. Let's try to do it. So what, what did we change? The foreground, that means the color of this. Its size. Its form. And the background next to it or behind it. Okay, let's run and see. I have unexpected char character, so I have a concatenation problem. Let me see what kind of missing I have here. Uh, sometimes I can't see by my eyes. Let me just check what am I missing. Let me get it to here and see what's missed. Seems to me fine. Maybe somewhere I missed something. Oh, for sure. This one here is wrong. Yes. I said sometimes. Uh, that's why I, I would recommend. Okay, good, good. Uh, let me just get back. I would highly recommend that you keep it, each instruction or each argument in this case, on one line. Why? Not to fall in the mistake I, I fell in. Why? Now, I was expected, I was expecting myself to move to new line. So it was expected that this is a new line. I didn't. So what happened? This one create, created a problem. So let's rerun again. Okay, that's, that's it actually. Now look, this is my button. The button now, the, the foreground color, the color of the text is blue. The background is red. Now, uh, don't mind my selection. Uh, you customize it the way you like, okay? <laughs> Some people are much better than uh, others in choosing colors and matching. So now look. So this is the idea. Is that it? No. I will add some more customization. Now I will add two more things. Now we added the size of the, uh, the text and the font of our text. I would like to add the size of my button, okay? So I will say width equals, uh, let's go for 10 pixels. Uh, how about height? I'll go for five pixels. Oh no, 10, 10 and 10, 10 and 10 is okay. Okay, and now extend. Let's try. So that means the size of the button itself. That was the default size. Sometimes we need to make it bigger like this, for example. Oh, that's much big okay we can minimize that a bit the uh, height we can take it half way through i think it will be nicer yeah of course that's much nicer so of course there's no much big button like this but you may change it you may add, uh, modify it based on your own need okay so you, you now you know how to do it you, you can provide the width uh, let's say if we remove the height totally what will happen Let's try to do it. So see what happens. Now look, yeah, width is considered, but the height remains default. Okay. If we change the width to height, totally, let's see how things go. I never tried, I'm, I'm just trying with you. Yeah, now, yes, we go to height. Okay, so this is the idea width and let's keep height half way through five only all right one more thing so now we customized the foreground the background the font the width and height the size of the button uh, let's customize one more thing how about we customize this uh, i have to do this Let me, not in order for me not to do this mistake again, I move one line each so that I don't do this mistake or I don't fall in it again. Active background. Active, yeah, active background. Background. Okay. So active background, they say, uh, this is not like uh, font. It, it's, it accepts directly. Active background, when you click on the button, 
its color changes. It activates once you click on it. So let's say uh, it's green. Once it is clicked, it changes to green. Now let's run it and see. Active background. We may have also active foreground. Oh, it seems I have a problem. Unknown option. Okay, that means I mistyped it. Let me check what I did. Active background. Uh, seems fine. Oh, passive, not active. Yeah, I say sometimes by my own eyes while I'm typing, I cannot see. It happens to me a lot. Okay. Now look, this is my button. It's red background and the color of the text itself is blue. If I click, it changes to green. Click, now click green. Click, if you keep holding, it will remain green, okay? So this is also another way of customization for the button. You see, just for the button, you have so many, okay? And uh, well, if, if we try this, let's try, try to do this. I, I never tried before, I'll try with you also. Active foreground. Okay. Well, let's say it's red. Let's say yellow. Comma and concatenate. Let's try. Now, see the foreground when you click, that means we are customizing the background to green, the foreground the text here to yellow. Okay. So this is the idea, all right? This is the idea of customizing a button. Uh, we have um, different others, uh, different other widgets and customization. So uh, tomorrow, today I think is already done, finished. I will just try to upload your assignment. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'll just write real projects for you. That means what? That means uh, like uh, real, GUI applications, not just a button to be clicked or la uh, label to be displayed or some text. No, no, uh, we will customize some real life problems uh, in terms of GUI applications in Python. Until then, have a good time. Goodbye.